Third, religion is morally compromised. Religion is a bad moral example, especially this book, the Bible. And I think I'm going to prove it here. Let me, I'm going to try an experiment. And uh, I'm using Dinesh as an example, but he's a nice guy, and we like him, which makes the example work, okay? I'm going to give you two scenarios, which I think are morally equivalent. Both are fictional. Uh, the first one is there's this wonderful, loving family, Christian family. They go to church, they pray, they love God, there's a mother, father, there's children and that. Dinesh breaks into their house. He ties them up, he tortures them, he drowns the cat and he shoots the dog and then he kills the family and he sets the house on fire. And the police ask him, Dinesh, why did you do that? And Dinesh says, no reason, uh, the devil made me do it. Now, what if that had really happened? How would you characterize a person like that? What would you call them? Think of some moral term that you would call them. Maybe a moral monster, evil, um, sick, um, psychotic, psych uh, sociopath, whatever. You would, you, would, you would use some morally... Raise your hand if you would use some kind of a morally negative word to describe the actions of a person who would do something like that. I think every hand would go up in this room, right? You wouldn't describe someone who broke into a house like that? I want to see, is there anybody here who would think that it was okay to break into a house and kill a family like that? I want to see, is there anybody here who does? Okay, nobody, good. Because I didn't see that many hands go up, I was wondering here for a minute. Okay, now here is another fictional story that is morally equivalent. It's the same story, although it's probably worse. The book of Job. Job was a perfect and upright man, the Bible says. He'd never done anything wrong. He had a wonderful religious family. And yet, the God of the Bible tortured him, killed his animals, had a wind blow over and kill his children, and torture him for, for a long, long, long time. And when asked, why did you do that? Why? Why would you do that, God? Here's his confession. I'm going to read it to you. Job chapter 2, verse 3. Write this down, so, or remember this. Job 2, 3. This is an indictment. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil? And still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. The devil, you incited me, you made me do it, to destroy this man and his family without cause. Just like the hypothetical Dinesh said, no reason the devil made me do it. You labeled Dinesh a moral monster, didn't you? I mean, he's not, but you understand. So now, how many of you would agree with me and raise your hand that the God of the Bible, therefore, is also a moral monster? Raise your hand. Let's see. Is the God of the Bible a moral monster? Why are not more hands up? It's the same scenario. It's the same situation. I think only, what, about 20% of the hands went up? Is that about right? Well, it's fiction, of course, but still, the story with Dinesh was fictional as well. And we would still call that fictional Carol story a moral monster. What's happening in the mind of you believers who did not raise your hands demonstrates that you are morally compromised in your judgment. Your religion is clouding your ability to think clearly about moral issues. Your religion supersedes true morality. It's like the uh, position of the Roman Catholic Church on birth control. The Pope is too religious to really care about real morality in the world. The religion drives him more importantly. Mother Teresa was the same way. When it comes to the Holy Land, when it comes to holy wars, when it comes to religious divisiveness, people just like you, good people, good people in this audience who could not raise your hand and make a moral, morally true statement because your religion is holding you back. Do you see how it clouds your judgment? This Bible is filled with tons of stories of this brutal deity, bloodthirsty deity who has to shed blood because his vanity is so fragile that if you don't kiss his feet and worship on the Sabbath, he's going to kill and commit genocides. In Ruth Green's book, The Born Again Skeptic's Guides to the Bible, it takes 10 pages just to list the mass killings committed, condoned, or commanded by this God of the Bible. And yet you pretend to love this? You pretend to love this book? that has such brutality in it? Remember, Job was without sin. He was perfect. God had no reason. He admitted, I had no cause and the devil made me do it. The way the Bible treats women, for example, is not supportive of equality among women. 
Look at how we look at how for a religious right believers, and not all not all Christians are the same. Look how their opinions about the environment, or stem cell research, or birth control, or abortion rights, or gay marriage, or the death penalty, or doctor-assisted suicide. Your opinions on these moral issues is twisted. It is biased by your religion. It's like a glasses that is keeping you from really seeing the real world, where the real problems are, because your religion is more important. You're too religious to really care about these issues.